We're here to talk about the U.S. Women's National Team's 4 to nothing win against Argentina from last night in the second group stage match of the W Gold Cup. And we're going to talk about our three biggest takeaways, which are the internal competition of the U.S. Women's National Team, our success in the wide areas, and how balance is going to be really key to this summer's Olympics roster. So 19-year-old Jaden Shaw scored a brace inside 18 minutes last night, followed quickly by a header goal from Alex Morgan off of a Casey Kruger cross. The fourth goal came from a Lindsay Horan PK that was taken very nicely in the 77th minute. Lindsay actually came on our show for an interview and spoke to us about her approach to PKs and how she handled the pressure of taking one at the World Cup last summer just months after she missed one in Champions League. And it's a really great interview, super insightful about her PK approach. If you haven't heard it yet, you can go back and listen. So it's actually really hard playing against a team like Argentina who sit in a low block. They're really physical, but they also play with a lot of gamesmanship. What do I mean by gamesmanship? They are cheeky, they're physical, but they're always like talking to the referee and trying to influence them and constantly calling for fouls themselves, staying down and taking a long time to get up. It's very disruptive play. It's in Argentina's best interest to not let the U.S. get into a nice flow and a nice rhythm. So when you're on the U.S. team playing against this style, it kind of can feel like you're like losing a battle. And on the U.S., the stakes are so high. You're fighting for a spot all the time that making any mistake, like giving up a foul in a bad area, makes you feel like almost angry with the other team. Like they're putting your performance and your spot on this team at risk with these little moves that sometimes feel like, oh, I can't believe you did that. I remember playing it. Clearly, I remember playing against teams like this as a younger player on the team when I didn't feel that kind of freedom to talk to the ref or freedom to make any mistakes at all. And it's a hard style of, of competition to be playing against. And it's not really what we're used to from playing in the NWSL. This style is pretty prevalent in CONCACAF and CONMEBOL the federations that are competing in gold cup from central and South America. But I thought that the U S did a really good job handling it last night, keeping their heads for the most part and handling frustrations professionally. The U S had almost totally fresh legs. Only one player has started both of these gold cup games so far. And that's Corbin Albert PSG midfielder who left Notre Dame after just two seasons to go and play professionally in France. Jaden Shaw's two goals Both showed great off-ball movement, like off-ball movement of a veteran player. On that first goal, Jaden shows that intuition to be ready for Lindsey Horan's quick free kick. It was really heads-up smart play from both of them. I can't say that enough. But Jaden's timing is what is important here. She sees that Lindsey is ready to take a quick free kick. She makes that movement into wide open space, and then she just sets herself up for a goal. On her second goal, Rose Lavelle did a great job to combine down that left flank and put a cross into a dangerous area. But if you watch Jaden's movement, she holds her run. She starts at the top of the box and she kind of waits until the ball is coming so that she can run onto the cross. It's possible to overrun a cross like that. And then the ball is behind you. And I loved Jaden's patience in her timing to approach the ball at the right time and be able to volley that in with her right foot. It was really clean and really positive movement from such a young player. Super exciting to see that. So what three things did we learn from last night's game? One, so far our competition is ourselves. This is nothing against the Dominican Republic or Argentina. I actually think they both did a really good job executing their game plans. They were frustrating to play against and they kept the scoreline reasonable. Our U.S. team has a lot more experience and a lot more support behind them. So of course we should win these games handedly. These first two games in scorelines really aren't telling us anything crazy that we didn't already know, but I will say that it's great to give experience to younger players in tournament styles, and it's always good to try to break down low blocks. What the coaches, Twyla Kilgore and Emma Hayes, are going to be looking for from games like this are the little things. So great that Lindsay played quickly on a set piece that led to a goal. Are the forwards pressuring quickly once they lose the ball and winning the ball back right away after a turnover? How is the positioning of the midfield on 50-50 and second balls, and are we winning those? Who's completing their passes forward? Who's breaking lines? These little things are what the coaches are looking for. You might think in a 4 nothing win, the team might not be watching that much film, but you would be wrong to think that. There's nothing like watching film after games that you win handedly because... The coaches have found things to critique. That's why it's like so frustrating to miss even just a single pass or give up a foul in a bad area or miss a chance or give the ball away. 
you know there's somebody on the bench who might get a chance because you made a mistake. I think about how La Roquette on Argentina hit the crossbar off that long looping shot. There was a mistake in there somewhere. I haven't picked apart the film to figure out exactly what it was, but the coaches will, and that's going to get analyzed in film. I think that's just proof that the standards on this team have to be so high all the time because you just know it's going to come back up. I saw the U.S. team sprinting in for halftime as opposed to Argentina, who just kind of like walked in a little bit dejected. It's all business for this U.S. team. The competition is internal. These are the games that they're creating their own learning opportunities as a team. In games like this, for the players, it's about how well you can perform to protect your standing in the lineup or on the roster. And your competition is wearing the same jersey as you. So my point here is that this is a great start from the U.S. Women's National Team, but the external competition is about to heat up. Two, our wide areas are looking really strong. We are creating quality chances in wide areas, which is great. We're carrying this through from game one, where we saw a lot of success with crosses, especially down the right flank with Midge Purse. And success in wide areas is necessary when you're playing against a low block because the middle of the field just becomes so overcrowded and it's really hard to just drive right through the middle of the field. This was definitely the case last night against Argentina as well. Our first two goals actually came off of set pieces in wide areas. Lindsay's quick restart for Jaden Shaw's first goal was on that left-hand side. And then there was some good combination play actually off of a throw-in, which resulted in Rose's cross to Jaden Shaw. Beautiful finish, by the way, but the U.S. Women's National Team treats throw-ins as set pieces, which I know might sound crazy, but both offensively and defensively, throw-ins are something this team goes over in training and in film all the time. They're treated with just as much importance as corner kicks, as free kicks. Um, throw-ins are like an opportunity to get a sh like the defense's shape a little bit out of order. So especially when you're playing against a low block, it's a great opportunity to start an attack. A really positive thing that we've seen so far, when the middle has been so clogged up, we have found success in those wide areas and scored goals from that. Three, a balance of new talent and experienced talent is going to be needed. I think there's a tendency from fans and from the media to just be really obsessed with new players and deservedly so. A lot of these new players are so exciting and I love seeing them play. But for the Olympics, it's going to be a balance of youth and experience that gets this U.S. team into the right place. So we love Jaden Shaw. We love Corbin Albert. We love Olivia Moultrie. But just as important, we need Rose Lavelle and Lindsey Horan and Lynn Williams to be firing on all cylinders and leading this team with experience. So I just think it's important as a fan to not only get caught up in these exciting new players, but keep in mind that we have some of the best players in the world already experienced, already learning how to lead this team, um, kind of will show these young players how to do things. And I think that's really just as important as the new talent, if not more so. This tournament roster should have a lot of players in the prime of their careers. I think that's kind of what gives you that balance of experience and leadership in this we've been here before kind of feeling going into a tournament. So I'm just preaching a little bit of balance and a little bit of like measured attitude about all of these players who together will make a winning roster. Thank you so much for being here. We will be back for Monday night's game against Mexico. Mexico looked great against the Dominican Republic. They won that game eight to nothing on Friday night. And there's some familiar faces on this Mexican team as well from the NWSL, Diana Ordonez and Maria Sanchez of the Houston Dash. This game will be the most competitive so far for the U.S. in this tournament. And the U.S. are already through to the quarterfinal, but it's another great test to continue their rise into the form for the knockout rounds. This is the women's game, and we have plenty more content for you to watch. There's so much happening on this channel, including interviews with England's Jill Scott and the U.S. women's national team's Crystal Dunn. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time.